Welcome guys to Coffee with Kelly week 124. Thanks for joining me today. I hope your summer is going fantastic. It has been a hot summer, hasn't it? Um, I know I think we're at the end of August right now, so we have a couple more weeks and I pray it cools off, but I love summer. I don't know about you. It's my favorite season. And um, so I hope you're doing fun stuff with your family and hanging out and going to the beach and all that. And so again, thanks for joining me today. So uh, something happened this weekend that kind of made me a little nostalgic. So uh, we're gonna talk about that. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today. And Lord, I thank you for the summer months. Uh, I pray for grace on those really, really hot days. I pray, Father, that we would enjoy our summer evenings with family and friends and just hanging out and schedule is looser. And so I pray, Lord, that as I talk about remembering things, I pray, Lord, that you would challenge us this morning to actually never forget all the things that you've done in our lives and forget who you are and just um, the miracles that we see in our lives over and over again. So I just give you the next few minutes and pray that your spirit would speak to us in Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said, uh, I'm feeling a little nostalgic. So last weekend we had a baby, sh uh, baby shower for my daughter. My baby girl is having a baby girl and I'm really excited about it. So we were doing shower plans and getting ready for it. And the night before, uh, I decided to use one of my friend's old wagon. I think it might have been from when she was a kid. I'm not sure. And put baby blankets in and stuff in and put presents in it. Anyway, so I was looking for my daughter's uh, old baby blanket. And so I was looking through old stuff, digging through stuff. I found a couple blankets um, and one was pink and blue. So at the moment I'm like, was this my son's or my daughter's? And uh, it's got a lot of pink in it, so I don't know. So I thought it was my son's. It was back in the day when we didn't know the sex, you know, uh, we never even had a sonogram with Zach, that's my son. And so we didn't know if it was a boy or girl. And so uh, whoever made me the blanket obviously was doing a pink and blue thing, but I wasn't quite sure. So then I started pulling out old photo albums to see if I could find which kid had that blanket because I didn't want to lie and say, this is McCall's blanket and it was my son. So anyways, it was my son. So in all that process, I was looking through old pictures and their baby pictures and finding different things to decorate the shower with. I actually found, um, my mom was Catholic and so I was baptized as a baby and I found in a box the little white, which was now um, kind of yellowed because it's been so long, but the little white outfit with the little bonnet and everything and the blanket that my mom used for me when I was baptized. And um, so I was just getting all nostalgic. So in that process, I was going through pictures and looking at things, I find this. And it's a program from my 20 year reunion. So since then I've had a 10 year reunion, a 20 year reunion, and a few years ago went to my 40 year reunion. If you could imagine that, I, I was shocked that I could be that old, but here I am. But I graduated in 1979. So at our, <coughs> excuse me, 20 year reunion, they took um, pictures of us and then a few and pictures of the gathering we had it at redondo beach in a big hotel and then a few weeks later or maybe a month or two they sent us a program and it had all the pictures that they had taken um, all of our contact information and just different nostalgic things and it even had a place in the back it was kind of really cool all oh, the good old days and it talked about the music hits from 1979 when I graduated. Um, some of the music hits, just if you're wondering, What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers, I Want Your Love by Chick, Reunited by Peaches and Herb, Hot Stuff, oh my gosh, I can't even believe it, um, from Donna Summers, My Sharona, Ring My Bell, Escape, um, do, do You Think I'm Sexy, Sexy by Rod Stewart. Oh my goodness, that's what was playing in 1979. And the best picture that won that year was Kramer versus Kramer. If you remember, Dustin Hoffman was in that. Some television highlights, Dallas, The Dukes of Hazard, which I didn't care for, a MASH I liked, One Day at a Time, 60 Minutes, That's Incredible, and Three's Company. The cost of living in 1979, a new house, 58,000. Average income, 17,000. 
a new car was 5,000, a loaf of bread, 47 cents, a gallon of gas, 86 cents, President Jimmy Carter, uh, our vice president was Walter Mondale, and 79 sports winners. Uh, Pittsburgh did great. The Pittsburgh Pirates won the World Series. The Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. Seattle Supersonics, the NBA champs. And so just fun stuff, stuff like that. And so it was fun to look at this. Again, that always happens, right? You're looking for one specific thing and you find all this good stuff and you sit there for hours looking through stuff. And I was just looking through this and so it brought back memories of that reunion. And Brian and I, my husband, we went to high school together. And uh, Donna, uh, Larry Hansen, who's a pastor here at our church, his wife, Donna, went to high school with me too. We were cheerleaders together, so we went with them to this reunion. And so we were not believers, my husband and I, nor Donna, I don't think, during the time of high school. I got saved a week after we graduated. Brian got saved a year later. So uh, my experience with this group of people was a little different, again, being a non-believer. So <clears throat> I remember going to the reunion and we're all sitting with friends that I hung out with at a table. And it had been 20 years, right? So we're probably, what, 38, 20, around 38, 37. And we're looking around the table. And I remember this like it was yesterday. We had a policeman, we had a teacher, we had a pastor, we had an FBI agent, we had a businessman. So we had all these professionals at this table. And we were all kind of tripping out about it because we knew each other when we were young and trying to decide what we would do with our life. And here we are professionals, like you're teaching our children. And you know, when you haven't seen someone for 20 years, it's like uh, your memory of them is kind of stuck in time. And so we were all just laughing about it and it was just really weird. And again, us not being believers in high school and we didn't keep in touch with a lot of these people. And there was this, the whole night was a bit surreal because people would ask Brian, so what do you do now for a living? And he'd say, well, I, I'm a pastor. Well, their mouth would drop or they would just stare at us or they didn't know what to say. First of all, we were Catholic and when you're not a Catholic anymore, that's already a thing. Um, but the fact that Brian was a pastor blew most of their minds. Uh, Brian was anything but a good boy in high school. He was a druggie, he was in the druggie Lodo group. Um, he even sold drugs, he stole, like he was just not a good guy before he was saved. And this is the Brian that they knew. So when he says he's a pastor, they're all like, and they, they try to recover their face, but they didn't recover and I would just kind of chuckle. But then they didn't ask any more questions. They wouldn't, they, most of them didn't really want to know what brought us to that point or um, why or how our lives have changed. You know, they just stopped asking anything once they found out Brian and Pastor. And as a side note, much different than by the time we were at our 40 reunion, people actually were interested in what we did. A lot of people had um, left the Catholic Church and um, uh, maybe we're Protestant now or whatever. Others had mellowed and were more, you know, our age now. We're really curious. So what does your life look like and what do you do? It was quite different. People actually really cared about what we did. It was, it was quite a contrast. But at the 20 years, no, they had nothing to say, no questions to ask. But through the night, there was just one kid that Brian used to hang out out with and he probably did drugs with them I don't know and most everybody at the 20-year reunion was um, high or drunk loaded whatever almost everybody was very few people were not intoxicated um, in some way except probably us <laughs> me and Brian and Dawn and Larry and so one guy that used to party a lot with Brian he kept coming back to Brian during the night and he'd say Brian wait wait you're a pastor? And Brian would say, I am. And he'd be like, mm. and he'd walk away. And we'd kind of like, mm. and we had really prayed for opportunities to share about Christ because we knew that a lot of our old friends were there. So we were just really praying a lot for opportunities. And it was hard because we weren't getting a whole lot. Um, and then again, this guy would come back and say, wait, you're seriously, are you kidding me? Brian, who we did this together, and he would name things, and we did this together, and we did this together. You mean to tell me 
that you're you're a, a pastor now? And Brian would say, yeah, I am. And he'd like laugh and walk away. Well, by the end of the night, and maybe four or five times this, this guy would come up and say this to Brian. He finally came up to Brian, and I don't know if it was like Brian was as close to as a priest as he had been to at a long time. I don't know. But he starts opening up to Brian. And again, he's he's drunk off, you know, he's drunk off his feet. But he starts to talk to Brian on how depressed he is and how miserable he is and how he's considering and has considered many times in the past to take his life. And, and Brian's trying to encourage him and minister to him and, and really begin to counsel him throughout the night every time the guy would come by. But the guy's really, really opening up to him. And I remember leaving that night and we got in the car and we're all sharing our experiences because you kind of break up a little bit and it was like, that was the weirdest thing. And we thank God for that guy who kept coming to Brian and, and prayed that something that Brian said, that the Holy Spirit would use it in his heart and his life to draw him to himself. So anyway, it was a weird, weird experience. And so as I was looking at this program and began to look through it, I began to reflect on that night and looking at our pictures. And then I realized um, that the biggest change in us in that last 20 years from 79 to 99 was the fact of what God had done in our lives and how he had transformed us. We weren't and we aren't the same people that graduated from St. Paul High School in Santa Fe Springs in 1979. We are completely different people. God saved us, he transformed us, and he set our hearts in onto eternity. We are completely changed. We are different. We aren't better than any of those people at their table. We aren't, you know, look who we are. We aren't better, we are different. And I think when you tell people you found Christ, at least we found that in that night, it's like you're accusing them. They, they get defensive, like, are you saying that I don't know Christ or that you're better than me? And it was just a weird reaction. And it's not that at all. And I, when I read this program, I was so reminded and so grateful of what God did for us. We were heading nowhere. And we were living in our sins and stuck in our sins. And in 1979, God set me free. You know, and I'm so grateful for that. And Paul tells us in Romans uh, that it's not about anything we have done. He didn't choose me because I'm great or because I was going to do great things for him or because I was doing enough things to earn my way into heaven. Not at all. It's by grace alone. And in Romans chapter 4, Paul was talking about Abraham in the very beginning of the chapter. And he says what, uh, he says, what did Abraham do to discover about being made right with God? He says, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they've earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. And Paul goes on. This is all in Romans chapter 4. He says, David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. And then he quotes David. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who record whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. And that's what I'm grateful of. I look back, back, I had great high school years, I had fun, but I was lost in my sin. And now God has cleared the record of my sin. That is an amazing uh, thing to me. I look back at high school and it seems so long ago. I even grabbed one of my high school um, this was uh, when, when we were cheerleaders, you had a football sweater and a basketball sweater that you changed in football season. You wore a long sleeve because you're outside and it was cold. And this was my basketball uh, cheerleading jersey, if, if you will. And such fun times. 
but I was lost. And now that I have been found, I am so grateful for all that God has done for me. And I think being nostalgic and reminiscing again just reminded me spiritually i have so much to be grateful for god has done it and i said yes god chose me he offered this invitation to me and all i did my part was i said yes i accepted it and i believed his word i uh confessed my sin, I acknowledged my sin, I asked for forgiveness, and I asked him to become Lord of my life. The Holy Spirit drew me, he opened my eyes, he changed my heart, and he regenerated me. And I am eternally grateful. And I look at things from my past, and again, although I loved high school, and I'm grateful for the experiences I had and the friends that I made, God um, brought me through so much. I'm most grateful that he called me, he chose me, and I am one of his. So what a great reminder and a couple hours to remind myself of who God is and what he's done in my life. And so I challenge you to take time today or every so often to remember back. And we always talk about like in Exodus or in the, in the, when Moses say, and remember and remember, and he'll bring up to the people, remember what God has done. Remember what God has done because we are forgetful people and we take, you know, we just forget what he's done. We take advantage of it. And um, so many times we're told to remember. And so I pray that you would take time to do that, that you would reminisce on who you were before Christ and that you would uh, be grateful for all that God has done in your life and who he has made you to be and who he is in your life and give him thanks humbly for setting your heart on eternity as well. And I pray that um, we would learn to share in a way that won't make people defensive that we or come across like we are better than them but that we truly can share who he is this god of love this god of forgiveness this god of mercy who has saved us and transformed us i pray that the spirit would give us a way to share that that would um that god would use to draw others to himself let's pray Lord, I thank you for my time in high school. I thank you for this little kind of a yearbook, nostalgic time where meeting old people and looking at old friends and remembering back on the experiences that you allowed me to have. Yet God, I'm so thankful that you drew me to yourself and that you chose me and set my heart on eternity and set my feet on a rock and set me on the right path and instead of, instead of being on the path towards sin and destruction I am on the path towards you and heaven and I thank you so much for that and um, I pray for the people who are watching I hope and pray that they have all made that decision to accept that invitation to walk with you and to live with you forever and so I pray that they would spend time reminiscing on that and being grateful for that and again offering thanks to you. I love you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.